Now, have you ever woken up in the early hours, turned on some obscure TV channel and found an infomercial for a home fitness product? Well, could that be where the product of our next entrepreneur, Donna Care Foley, ends up? Not if she has her way. She thinks it'll fly off the shelves, especially with the help of a dragon. My name's Donna and I'm here today to ask for £50,000 investment for a 25% stake in my company, The Running Mat Limited. I've been in the fitness industry now for over 18 years and seen many products come and go. My target market is the outdoor fitness industry, which has over 9 million participants in the UK alone, doing boot camps, personal training, running and outdoor fitness classes. For the past three and a half years, I've been running a successful business called No Lippy Boot Camp which is a ladies only outdoor bootcamp business. And it was while I was training my clients, I needed a particular product. I've got a personal trainer and her client coming in just to show you an example. As you can see, it's now impossible for a personal trainer, a bootcamp instructor to carry an exercise mat and exercise and run at the same time. I needed a particular product that was light, easy to carry, and where my, my participants could run and exercise too. After trying to purchase this type of product for over a year, I realised I had actually invented a brand new product. My product is the running mat. The running mat is a portable outdoor exercise mat. You can run and exercise whilst wearing it. The compact unit opens up into a cushioned exercise mat. It's waterproof, it's easy to clean, it protects the hands, the knees, the back and the bum. No more dirty clothes, no more hands on wet grass, no more lying in snow and no more putting your hands in dog mess. This is a brand new product, there's nothing like this on the marketplace at the moment. I have four designs registered, a patent pending and trademark. I thank you very much for your time today and welcome any questions that you may have. A confident pitch from fitness instructor Donna Care Foley from Newcastle. To get her running mat business off the starting block, the entrepreneur needs a £50,000 investment. On offer in return is a 25% stake. First to jump in is health club tycoon Duncan Bannatyne. Donna. Hi, Duncan. Is this a joke? <laughs> no, it's not. Come on, you cannot be serious. You're taking the mic. No. Look, you said you've identified a problem. Yes. I don't see a problem you've identified and solved. You had two trainers came in. One of them's carrying a big rolled up mat under his shoulder. <clears throat> two issues. First of all, that mat was very thick. You could put that mat on the ground and lie down and it would stop stones hurting your back. You can't with this, it's too thin. It's not going to solve that problem. You, you, you're actually creating in your own head a problem that doesn't really exist. I, I just think that the amount of people who train like that is minuscule. No, it's well, definitely not in the northeast. And all well, the you know, I live in the northeast. My office is in the northeast. Yeah. I've got five health clubs in the northeast. I just can't see it. I, th I think I think you're having a joke. Not at all, Duncan. Fitness expert Duncan Bannatyne's damning verdict on Donna's product could spell disaster for her hopes of investment. But will Peter Jones see potential in her running mat? I must admit, I don't understand why you wouldn't put a rucksack... When you go to these boot camps, Tara does one twice a week, and when she goes out at the door, she's got her little sports rucksack, yes. a bottle of water, towel yeah. and a mat. So how does she run or sprint and do any type of exercise whilst carrying it. Carrying what? The exercise mat. Well, she takes it off, you numpty. But why? Well, that's the whole point of the exercise mat. She, you takes don't a, she doesn't go so... with a rucksack and then do the whole hour <laughs> well, and a half. So that doesn't Donna, work. She, what I'm saying is she puts it down on the side. Well, why would you put it down? Then, well, because she doesn't want to wear no, a rucksack. No, that's not right. How this works so well is um, when my clients are doing boot camp, 
um, I'll say, okay, let's, let, let's go. We can run from A to B and we don't need to carry all the stuff with us. We can go from A to B and use different areas and do all our exercises, put it back on, run up and down the hill five Donna, or six times, Donna, Donna, do another bit of Donna, exercise with a mat on Donna, and then off we go again. Donna, it's fantastic. You have created a boot camp exercise regime that requires one of these. No, not at all. And then you no. invented this so that this can be used in your boot camp exercise regime. Donna's fighting back to defend her product from some harsh criticism. Will Kelly Hoppen hold a more favourable perspective than her male rivals? Hi, Donna, I'm Kelly. Hi. Um, Hi. I actually think it's very clever because I do train every day and I know that if I'm in a park <coughs> and it's beautiful weather, forget the, the mud, mm. you want something. And it's a problem because you're taking water with you and everything. It's, I don't think it's only for personal trainers. I think no, that's, definitely not. You yeah. know, it's for people Anyone that want to exercise outside, but yoga is also a massive market. So when that does yoga, it's just actually bought one because she likes going to the park and doing yoga actually in the park. The problem is that, you, you know, your patent hasn't gone through. Well, it hasn't, no, it's early days. Um, it's not going to go through. Sorry? It's not going to go through. You're spending money on a patent, it isn't going to happen. I think over the next three years, I'm going to sell as many of these products as I can. And if it doesn't go through, it doesn't go through. The dragons may be out to get Donna on her patent, but will they go any easier on the subject of her sales? Peter Jones has some questions. Donna. Yeah, um, hi. How many do you think you can sell? Um, there's two different routes I can go down. The, fir the first route is to sell to personal trainers and boot camp trainers and also contact um, stores to sell it in shops myself. Um, I'm looking to sell 8,500, just under 8,500 over the year. And what will you sell them for? If you're selling them into stores, you're going to sell them at a wholesale price? Yeah, £25. £25 pounds yeah. for that? Yeah. Oh, you've 35 got to be kidding people me. Sold, um, bought them last week. I've sold them to um, a store, chain of stores, for £12.50 each. And uh, they were very excited about the product. Sorry, I, I asked you the question about what you're going to sell wholesale, and you said £25. Oh, so, no, sorry, sorry, I misunderstood that. So um, you're going to sell no, them at £12 uh, into yes. retail? At the moment, I'm selling it at £12.50. If I go wholesale, though, I'm expecting to sell more like 100,000 products over the year. What? Which way are you going to bloody go? Well, that's exactly... Um, that's, that's exactly my dilemma. What, you want Whether, advice from me? You, no, not you're at all. running the pitch. I don't care. If I go wholesale, if I go international, if I only sell in Newcastle, it's your problem. Yes. You're pitching to me. Harsh words from Peter Jones. But Deborah Meaden wants to know whether Donna's got a better grasp of the finances of her boot camp business. Donna, hi. hi. I'm Deborah. Your existing business, that's making money? It is. So how much profit are you producing a year? The first year was £30,000 turnover with just a £7,000 profit. Year two was a £54,000 with a £17,000 profit. And the last year it was a £66,000 turnover with £11,000 profit. So theoretically, you would have no issue with those businesses coming together? OK, Donna. I think you're very good. And sometimes, you know, I just invest in somebody because I think I'm not so sure about the product, but I actually think that this person, if there is a product in there, this person is going to be able to, to do it. And I think you, you come across really very well. Thank you. What's all this? Have I, I, have don't, I... Know. I don't know. I can't control it. <laughs> this it is supposed stop. to be good Trust news. Me, Trust me, you're as shocked as I am. This is supposed <laughs> to be good news, Don. It is. <laughs> right. I don't know why. It's so, I can't help you. I'm going to offer you all of the money. It would be for the businesses combined. So I would, I would want the combination of the boot camp okay. with this one. Um, and I would want 40% of the business. We must be a bit psychic here, because I'd written down exactly the same <laughs> offer. Um, I think you're fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I would also offer you the full amount, uh, but I would want 40% of both the businesses. 
Okay. Two identical offers from highly experienced businesswomen, Deborah Meaden and Kelly Hoppen. But has Donna's enthusiasm about her product been enough to win round their male counterparts? I think you should very, 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 very quickly tell Deborah you want to go into business with her and take her money and run because she won't catch you. <laughs> Kelly might. <clears throat> I've seen some stupid investments in the den, but this takes the biscuit. Honestly, I'm out. An incredulous Duncan Bannatyne is the first dragon to walk away from the deal. Which way will Piers Linney go? So, Don, I'll tell you what I think. I think the math, I think you will sell some. I just don't see there's a market big enough to get a return on an investment in the math, if you see what I mean. So I'm afraid I'm out. OK, thanks, Pierre. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. I need the mat to lie down, I think. <laughs> I, I'm, um, it's one of those moments in the den that you do get occasionally that very rarely happens, but when you get them, you have to sort of take 30 seconds out to see if you've missed the point. Because you've ended up getting an offer from clearly, you know... I mean, I used to regard them as quite sensible people. Um, so there's obviously something in it that I'm not seeing, but I'm with Duncan. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked that you have nothing. You have no patent. Anybody can replicate this. I don't think it's, it, I don't think it's going to sell. Do you know what I'm going to say, Donna? Like I'm, you want to invest? I'm going to say that you are very, very investable, but your idea is ridiculous. And so that's the only reason why I'm going to say I'm out. Compliments, but no cash. Now, Donna has two offers, but for more equity in her company than she wanted to give away. Can she secure a better deal? Um, would you two like to work together? Is that something that is a possibility? Um, I would love to have... Um, uh, um, he's come on board at 30%. Between years? I'd be very happy to share this with Kelly, but for me, it would have to be 40%, and particularly if there were two dragons, because, you know, you want me focused on, on, on making this work. At 20%, I'll do that. At less, I w it, it runs the risk of it just becoming, you know, something. I would be delighted to work with Deborah, but I also would want 40%, because it's very early on, and it's going to need a lot of attention. OK. I came in here and I said I wouldn't leave without a dragon. Um, and the fact that I've got a possibility of leaving with two is um, fantastic. And um, I would give 40% away to, to work with both of you. So I would love to accept. Great. Excellent. Brilliant. Fantastic. Donna has done it. She's agreed to part with a bigger stake in her business than she wanted, but with two multimillionaire dragons on board, she can barely contain her delight. I'm dead excited. <laughs> Peter, do you remember when this used to be a serious business? Oh, <laughs> stop it, Duncan. <laughs> you what? <laughs> stop Belt it. Belt Matt. Belt Matt. 